This is healthy foods for blood pressure. Hi, this is PJ's Thriving, and this is about, all about my weight loss journey. Today, I am talking about blood pressure. Check it out. All adults that are over age 40 should have their blood pressure checked annually. But just one blood pressure measurement is insufficient to diagnose hypertension unless the reading is like really high in the severe range. Some people also have white coat hypertension in which their blood pressure rises when they're in the doctor's office. So taking it several times and even in different places uh, is probably what's going to be needed. Now with blood pressure, you need to eat plenty of fresh vegetables, fresh and dried fruits, legumes, and dairy products for potassium. You need to limit the canned and other processed foods with added salt and You also need to limit fatty foods. You need to avoid pickled and very salty foods and excess alcohol and caffeine. As blood circulates through the body, it exerts varying degrees of force on artery walls. Doctors refer this to as blood pressure. Over 60 million North Americans have blood pressure that is too high or hypertension. In its early stage, high blood pressure is symptomless, so many people don't realize that they have a a potentially life-threatening disease. If the condition goes unchecked, high blood pressure damages the heart and blood vessels and can lead to a stroke, heart attack, and other serious consequences. In about 5% of the cases, there's an underlying cause for blood pressure. For example, like if there's narrowed kidney arteries, pregnancy, and adrenal gland disorder, or a drug side effect. Most often, there is an identifiable cause. This is referred to as primary or essential hypertension. Blood pressure rises when the arteries are arterioles, the body's smallest arteries, narrow or constrict, requiring the heart to beat more forcefully in order to pump blood pressure through them. Increased blood volume, often due to the body's tendency to retain excessive salt and fluids, raise blood pressure. And so do high levels of adrenaline and other hormones that constrict blood vessels. Monitor underlying factors. With age, blood pressure rises somewhat but no one fully understands precisely what leads to hypertension. And although a combination of factors seem to be involved because it tends to run into families, diabetes, obesity, and certain other disorders increase risk. Stress prompts a surge in adrenal hormones and a temporary rise in blood pressure. Some researchers believe that constant stress may play a role in developing hypertension. Other contributors, including smoking, excessive alcohol, and a sedentary lifestyle. Diet and hypertension. Um, The diet plays a role in both prevention and treatment of high blood pressure. Experts are now agreeing that simple things can help keep your blood pressure in check. Like limit your salt intake. A high salt diet also contributes to the condition in people who have a genetic tendency to retain sodium. In these individuals, restriction of salt beginning at an early age reduces the risk of developing hypertension. A portion of the population, including older people and people with diabetes, appear to be particularly sensitive to sodium and may benefit significantly from eating a low sodium foods. Now, experts and doctors disagree as how much salt is too much. Many recommend anywhere from 1,500 milligrams up to 2,000 milligrams of sodium per day for healthy individuals. And the best way to reduce sodium intake is to avoid adding salt altogether and to avoid most processed foods, which are usually loaded with sodium. So check your labels and look for that term sodium to find hidden salt. In addition to avoiding salty and pickled foods, use herbs and spices in cooking for your flavorings instead of the salt. So try to keep your weight down because being even slightly overweight contributes to hypertension. 
losing excess weight is often all that is needed to return blood pressure to normal. So even a modest weight loss will cause a drop in blood pressure. A high fat diet not only leads to weight loss gain, but may also contribute to high blood pressure. Limit fat intake to about 30% or less of total calories, with 10% or less coming from saturated animal fats. This means cutting back on butter and margarine, and switching to like low-fat milk and other low-fat dairy products. Choose lean cuts of meat and shifting to a low-fat cooking method such as broiling instead of frying. Reduce your alcohol and caffeine consumptions. Although a glass of wine or other alcoholic drinks daily seem to reduce the chance of a heart attack, consuming more than this will negate any benefit and may increase the risk of hypertension. Too much caffeine can also raise the blood pressure. Older adults with hypertension may be more sensitive to the effects of caffeine and should limit, limit their intake. Mind your minerals, people. Some nutrients protect against high blood pressure. Potassium, which is an electrolyte that helps maintain the body's balance of salt and fluids, helps ensure normal blood pressure. Potassium can be found in fruits and vegetables, dairy products, and legumes. Some studies have linked calcium deficiency to hypertension. The diet should provide two to three servings of low-fat milk products a day. Get more garlic, people. Get some stinky breath. <laughs> There's other research that appears to validate that the claims that garlic may lower blood pressure. The amount of garlic necessary to lower blood pressure, however, can cause other problems, especially unpleasant breath and body odor. So although garlic is available in odorless pills, it is not known if these pills reduce the same benefits as eating garlic fresh or lightly cooked. A further problem with garlic supplements is that there's a lack of government regulations, meaning there is no assurance that the product in the bottle matches the content on the label. And let's see, other lifestyle changes. While a proper diet is instrumental in maintaining normal blood pressure, it should be combined with other lifestyle changes. One of the most important is regular exercise, which lowers blood pressure by conditioning the heart to work more efficiently. If you smoke, give up the habit. Nicotine raises blood pressure. So quitting can help drop the blood pressure by 10 points or more. Here's a little fun fact. Did you know <laughs> dry roasted soy nuts can reduce blood pressure? These snacks don't merely nudge your blood pressure down a tad. According to research presented to the American Heart Association, eating a half a cup of a day can drop your blood pressure readings as much as some prescription blood pressure medications can. And you can find this type of nuts even in Walmart. When you're using over-the-counter medications, make sure you use them with caution. Over-the-counter cold, allergy, and diet pills can raise blood pressure. In some women, birth control pills or estrogen replacement therapy can also cause high blood pressure. Reduce your stress, people. Reduce it. Experts continue to have a big debate on the role of stress and hypertension, but there's no doubt that stress temporarily raises blood pressure. And some experts even think and argue that it may have long-term effects. So check out some type of meditation, yoga, biofeedback training, self-hypnosis, and other relaxation techniques that which may help you lower your blood pressure, help alleviate or help reduce some of your stress. Even some studies have even found that pets help lower blood pressure so get a dog anyway drug therapy doctors usually recommend about six months of lifestyle changes to see if mild to moderate hypertension returns to normal le levels if it does not then usually they'll go to some type of medicine and there's dozens and dozens of different types so they can either prescribe one or a combination of a couple that will help 
lower the blood pressure with minimal adverse side effects. The most widely used drugs are diuretics, which reduce the salt and fluid volume by increasing the flow of urine. So you'll be peeing more. Some classes of drugs reduce the heart's workload by helping to widen or dilate the arterioles to increase blood flow. Other regulate nerve impulses to slow the pulse. It is also important to treat the disorders that contribute to the high blood pressure, and those can include diabetes and elevated blood cholesterol, both of which compound the risk of developing heart problems. Dietary and other lifestyle changes that lower high blood pressure also help to control diabetes and blood cholesterol levels. So most people that are seeking out some type of weight loss journey that are considered by the national average to be technically obese usually have some type of blood pressure issues or are on medicine. Some people don't even know that they have those issues. Not all people, but there are a good part of people that have blood pressure issues. And by us being on a weight loss journey, losing some of this weight and changing our lifestyle and eating healthier and becoming more active, one of my biggest goals is to get off the medicine. I'm done. I'm ready to stop taking all these pills. So if you are new here, please hit that like and subscribe and click that bell so you'll get notified anytime that I put up a new video. If you are already a subscriber and watching the video, thank you very much for all the support. And please give me a thumbs up on the video. And until next time, people, wear your masks. There's still a bunch of that coronavirus floating around. Stay safe and have a great week. Bye, guys.